It was a relatively low-key arrival for Vice Admiral Sir David Steele. He comes to the Rock at a time of global upheaval, with the need for social distancing meaning some of the more ceremonial aspects of the swearing-in ceremony, such as a guard of honour, having to be dispensed with. And Gibraltar's response to the COVID-19 pandemic was a feature of Sir David's first address. He said it was typical of Gibraltar's character that the virus had not been allowed to take a foothold on the rock. The government of Gibraltar needed to take tough decisions to protect public health. And if I may be allowed, I commend the chief minister and his government for the way in which they have confronted this, this threat and the way in which this parliament has been as one in ensuring a timely and proper response. We may or may not see a second wave of the virus. But what the second round will certainly contain will be economic challenges, the like of which we have never faced before as an autonomous, self-governing administration. Those will be challenges on which I hope we will see the same unity of purpose in this place as we have during the past months. We have thankfully been spared the most severe public health ramifications of the crisis. But as we have kept saying throughout this pandemic, it is not over yet, and the rules of human behaviour, those new rules, must remain for a while. In his opening address, the Chief Minister said the people of Gibraltar were hospitable, but fierce guardians of their homeland. No less British than anyone in the British family, but also with their own unique character. Fabian Picardo said a good relationship with the Governor will lead to success, but he made clear there had to be a partnership and cooperation, with a good rapport being what serves Gibraltar best. We're entreated to work together. Additionally, it's also worth remembering that Section 49 of the current Constitution provides that the Governor will keep the Chief Minister fully informed of the general conduct of those matters for which you are responsible. And Section 52 provides that the Governor and the Chief Minister, that is to say, you and me, at least for now, shall confer on a regular basis and the Chief Minister shall brief and keep the Governor informed about the policies of the government and the public affairs of Gibraltar. We are clearly about to get to know each other much better. I, for one, very much look forward to it and the work that we will no doubt be able to do together in the public interest of Gibraltar. And I have no doubt that we will. And that we will enjoy doing so and we will establish a strong partnership and rapport as we do. On that and on all the other areas where we will do more for Gibraltar together than we ever could apart. In his reply, the leader of the opposition said Gibraltar has to be bold and imaginative in mapping out what it wants for the future. He said the rock would jealously guard its self-governance, adding the governor was appointed by the Queen, but with the consent of the people of Gibraltar. Let us not just drift on the agenda of others. Let us set our own ambitions and ambitious set of goals. We are all in this house united in a belief in our self-determination and that the future of Gibraltar can only be decided by its people. In that sense, the decades-old campaign of previous generations to the right to our land has echoes in modern Gibraltar. Sir David said his flight's delay had only made him more eager to be here and spoke at length about the warmth of Gibraltar's people. He repeated the UK's guarantee on sovereignty and said the UK and Gibraltar were geographically separated but woven tightly together. Gibraltar will face new challenges and new opportunities. If therefore I wanted one phrase to summarise the priority I set myself for my time as governor, it would be to be forward-looking. Gibraltar honours its past, lives the present and focuses on a prosperous and inclusive future. None of what I have said undermines the importance of the United Kingdom's assurances on sovereignty, underpinned by the Gibraltarian people's right of self-determination. The newly sworn-in governor, accompanied by the chief minister, then made his way, walking, to the convent, with the public's new normal social distancing habits broken only by the occasional handshake.